everyone. Welcome to the second half of the Captain Beef Beefheart. Let's say that clearly. Captain Beefheart special weekend. <laughs> and today it's going to be Pachuco Cadaver. Well, just one sentence here in front of me. Pachuco Cadaver is a song from the same Trout Mask Replica album following immediately after Moonlight on Vermont. Well, Moonlight on Vermont is what we heard yesterday, and that sure got me engaged. Let's see how this one is, and um, I'm curious to see if it's a similar musical style, what the sound is, and what sort of goodies we discover along the way. So let's dive in. A squid eating dough in a polyethylene bag is fast and bulbous. Got me? Can't say that I've got you. I should first say that uh, last evening, after I finished that recording, uh, Vlad and I were talking about it a bit, and <laughs> we we actually he suggested it, and I immediately agreed with him that there is something a little bit Frank Zappa esque about this band and this music. There is maybe not as not as sophisticated as Frank Zappa, I would say, but Still, there's something about it. It's the quirkiness, the weirdness, the humor, the apparent chaos on the surface. I mean, I'm listening to this introduction, and even though there's so much patterning in there and consistency, if I am not paying close attention, the first sense I have is that of chaos. Um, it's noisy. It's like somebody banging on pots, pots and pans and uh, shaking shakers and who knows, throwing tin cans. It's like a bunch of kids just making a racket. And yet when I listen more closely and start noticing the patterns and the different layers and everything, it is far more than just a bunch of noise. You didn't hear that in the recording yesterday because it came after the fact. Actually, Vlad did grab a camera and start it running because he likes to do this and sometimes he catches these um, after the moment recordings. He calls them the minutes after recordings and he puts them on Coffee and Patreon for, us, for our supporters of a certain certain tier and upwards and sometimes he catches some really fun stuff. This was an interesting conversation and well, you can always check out what we have on Coffee and Patreon if you want. But back to this. I do have this now in my mind as I'm approaching this second Captain Beefheart piece is that there this thought of it is kind of Zappa-esque in a way and so sure enough here it is <laughs> Start with holding hands. When she drives her shimmy, sissies don't dare to glance. Yellow jackets and red devils buzzing round her hair hive hole. She wears her pants like a present, takes her fancy in the pants. A sedan skims along the floorboard. Her two pipes humming carbon car. Got her wheel out of a B-29 Volvo. Brody knob amber, Spanish fringe and talcum tassels, forever amber. She looks like an old squaw Indian. She 99, she won't go down. Avocado green, alfalfa yellow, adorn her to the ground. Tattoos and tarnished utensils, 
a snow white bag full of tears. Drives a cartoon around. Drives a cartoon around. Roma sells a blue umbrella, keeps her up off the ground. Round red sombreros, wrap her high tap horse of shoes. When she unfolds her umbrella, Pachuco's got to I want to stop it, but I don't. Her loving make me so happy. If I smile, I crack my chin. Her eyes are so peaceful, thinks it's heaven she been. Her skin is as smooth as a daisy's in the center where the sun shines in. Smiles as sweet as honey. Her teeth as clean as the combs where the bees go in. When she walks, flowers surround her. Let their nectar come into the air around her. She love, her love sticks out like stars. Her loving stick out like stars. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I just couldn't interrupt it. <laughs> I couldn't. The way he tells, it's 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 painting a picture. It's describing, you know, I have to say that I've just recently listened to um Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds by the Beatles. And in a way this reminds me of that one because it is painting an incredibly vivid picture. Well, this one is actually a little bit more down to earth, isn't it? Quite more down to earth, let's say. Uh, and it feels like it's not just a fanciful childhood's imaginary world. This one feels more like it's describing an honest to goodness person and, and, it's just painting such a vivid, vivid picture of it all. But, but somehow, the two of them, even though the music is so incredibly different, the writing of the lyrics, the way they both approach this um, way of describing and and developing the image into a full experience. I couldn't stop listening. I, I reached to stop. You saw me maybe once or twice. I was going to stop to comment, but then I thought, ah, I don't want to interrupt this. It's so compelling. That is the word I would use for this, is his way of presenting this, painting this picture is so riveting, so compelling. I don't want to interrupt it because I have this, I have this feeling of, you know, um, sitting around a campfire after dark, um, you know, you're the kid on the ground and you're listening to all the grown-ups tell terrifying ghost stories and you want to stop it, but but you don't dare stop it. You're sitting there with your jaw hanging open and your mind is running a million miles an hour and, and, and you're just, you can't not listen. For me, I can't not listen to this painting, this, this image that is coming to life in front of me. It's, it's almost more than a painting. And the music behind it, um, contributes to that whole sensory experience because it it gives it a certain feel and it matches so well what he's painting here i feel that it is in a certain place in a certain part of the world and and certain types of people and and um in a in a certain context the music sets the context for me and um it's a little bit rough, rustic, uh, certainly southwestern United States, perhaps even Mexico, and and it's it's dusty, and yet everything is so so strongly experienced that it doesn't come off as 
feeling like a dusty piece of music or something. Instead, it's, it's vibrant and intense in the whole experience of it and, and imagining of it. Okay, so let's, let's, let's finish. Love and stick out like straws. Gotta love the way he says that. Jazzy. There is a certain sort of, to me, old style Mexican flavor here. Like maybe what I would see in an old movie. I can see everybody wearing sombreros and cowboy hats. And cowboy boots. And jackets with some beading and braid on it. To actually contribute a lot to the whole overall feeling, don't they? They give it personality. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, it's it's one of those things that I feel like if I saw this on a if I saw an image like this in a let's say a calendar I would say I've got to I've got to have that calendar just because there's so much character to what I'm hearing what I'm seeing and I like that well musically it's certainly not as complex as and sophisticated as Frank Zappa. But still, I do feel like there is somehow a shared humor between the two of them. At least that's how I feel it. And um, I always enjoy those sorts of off the wall, weird, quirky personalities that come into your life, come into our lives as, you know, one of a kind. I feel like this is that type of musical personality. I don't know what he was like in real life, but certainly his music gives that feeling to me of, okay, this is the weird, weird friend walking in the door, but you know what? I'm happy to see him because, because he's so unique and, uh, his, his view of the world and his way of expressing himself and, and everything about it is just, it's him. It feels like he owns it. He's not ashamed of it. He's weird and wacky and, and funny. And I might be happy when he goes if he hangs around too long, but I certainly enjoy him as one of my wacky weirdo friends. <laughs> I can understand how he might have developed a cult following. I can also understand how he probably would never have had a lot of commercial success with this type of music because it's, it's just not quite enough to make it grab you like a Beatles song on the radio. But hey, it's great fun. And I'm happy to have dipped my toes into his work. Perhaps I'll come back to him in the future since I had such a blast. Um, but there we have my first um, exposure to Captain Beefheart in this weekend. And I enjoyed it. I'll see you soon.